For updates on sports stories across the globe, Aaron Akerijola joins us. Good morning, Aaron. Yes, good morning to you, Ayo. And good morning to you, Doctor. Fantastic Friday. And let's get it started um, quickly. Um, Ayo, this is going to be very good news to you. I got music to your ears. The fact that one man, Michael Oteta, has actually signed a contract extension till 2027. Yes, so. <laughs> Good work. So, um, um, the Spanish tactician, this is what he had I feel extremely proud, very excited. I'm looking forward to what's coming next. Of course, the Holy Grail for Arsenal at the moment seems to be the uh, year for Ch I mean, the Premier League. Let's see if they can actually lift it after two decades. Of course, you can see his record there um, 105 wins in 175 games. And you, you can see the trajectory and the progression. They, when he started, they finished 8 8. Fifth, second, second. Now, the question is this. Can he break the glass ceiling? Will be the big question if he can actually win the season. They have a very, very tight and crunch game against arch rivals, the Lily Whites, Tottenham Hotspur, um, this weekend on Sunday. And if we were to actually move on to that particular sport, um, a lot is expected this weekend from Arsenal and in the Premier League as the Premier League returns after the international break. And if they can, let's, let's actually move it on quickly, um, looking at how things will actually play out. Of course, Arsenal will be taking on Tottenham, which is the big one for this particular weekend. A lot is expected, and not just that alone. Um, we know that coming into this particular game, Arsenal will be missing two key players. And Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard and can actually see uh, the percentage wins when Odegaard is available as against when he is not available. So a lot is uh, um, this weekend. Let's see how we actually play. So Southampton and Manchester United will be kicking off the proceedings for this weekend. And Manchester City do have a game against Brentford. We'll be talking about Manchester City in a moment. And for Chelsea, they'll be going against AFC Bournemouth at the Vitality Stadium. So it's, a lot is expected from them and. We'll be expecting a lot of fireworks. Away from that, so let's get into the National Sports Festival. Um, yesterday, the opening ceremony um, was held at the renovated Stephen Kershaw Stadium in Asaba. And several states, well over 20 of them, 29 of them to be very precise, actually came together to present their very best on the 15s. Now, note, on the 15s, ah the ones that are entitled or actually are the ones that have been accredited to participate mm. in this particular game. And yesterday, the governor spoke and also the minister reiterated that a cheat will not be tolerated in the games. Let's first hear from the governor. It's our privilege to host you in Delta State. And I assure you that everything that we put in place to ensure a smooth and seamless sporting competition. Let me also appreciate the Federal Ministry of Sports Development and the local organizing committee for their steadfastness in organizing the National Youth Games. With about 6,000 athletes and over 1,000 officials participating, this year's edition of National Youth Games is record breaking. I am illegally looking forward to highly competitive games in the days ahead. I expect new talents to be discovered and new records set. At the end of the 10 day event, I believe that Nigeria sports will take another giant step forward. The only reason why our sports is in decline is because of the aging of our sportsmen and women. And the only way we can replace those aged athletes is to organize the National Youth Games as we are doing, is to discover the talents out of these games, and is to nurture these talents. My hope is that the different sporting federations representing the sporting federations of our country are here on ground to watch the games related to their different sports and to be able to discover firsthand the talents that need to be nurtured for the future of our sports. All right, quickly, before I press it for that, permit me to just say this here. Um, yesterday, Cristiano Ronaldo celebrated being the most followed person. Now, he celebrated that one billion mark. That means one billion persons 
follow Cristiano Ronaldo globally across different platforms. And uh, this is what he said. We made history. I have one billion followers. This is more than just a number. It's a testament of shared passion, drive, and love for the game and beyond. One billion across all several platforms and I must uh, also I must say this because some will be looking at the numbers and saying oh there will be overlaps I was going to say uh, in, it's not one, one billion exact people but he has one billion followers Follow across, across his social media that's platforms. what I'm saying so this is the breakdown there are some people Instagram, that follow him Facebook, on X, all the platforms YouTube yeah. um, Kusha <laughs> and Weibo yeah. so one billion people <laughs> when, or one billion followers, followers. so that's yeah, why I say so one billion followers so okay. yeah, yeah, well, so. Not, not all one billion people <laughs> <laughs> so he's celebrating one billion followers there quickly yeah. away from that are not too good news the super falcons are without a coach because one man has actually thrown in the towel say for medical reasons he has decided to step aside around the wild is his name he says he has he has family medical issues to take care of and he will be doing that so at the moment the super eagles are without a coach right now the super falcons are also without a coach and Let's say the last living in football, before I just talk about basketball briefly, in football, they are calling it the, uh, we are calling it one of the, the right word, the hearing of ages, literally, in football, because Manchester City has been slammed with 115 charges. It's called the trial. Of ages. Century. Okay, trial. Some are, okay, cause, That's what it is called. No, so some some no, different 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 um, sporting different sporting website. Of course, the BBC are actually saying that this this is a sports trial of the century, while some others are saying the trial of the ages, so to speak. So, um, whichever you want to actually look at it, Manchester City have been charged with 115 um, charges when it comes to financial breaches of financial fair play, and this has been hanging uh, on their neck. On Monday, that trial actually begins. We don't know where, and it will span for the next 10 weeks, and we'll be expecting um, all, we're, we're expecting uh, whatever comes up from it, because a lot of people, people like Arsenal, people like Liverpool, clubs are in the Premier League that feel that Manchester City have used underarm dealings to get ahead and won major titles. They will be hoping that they get justice from this. Let's see how that one goes down. And in basketball, we know that South Africa is hosting both the male and the female. For the men, they lost to Mali, 81-70. to But well, for the women, all right, they actually qualified for the semifinals, beating Egypt, 66-51. to Kudos to them. Yeah. The junior D-Tigers. But for the junior D-Tigers, not so much. Yeah. All right, so let me start back home, um, first of all, with the National Youth Games. Um, the Minister of Sports has been consistent in saying that they are hoping to discover new talent, and these are this is the opportunity that games like this present. He said that, that over 4,000 athletes on ground, the highest um, in terms of numbers of people participating. So it's great to see that um, enthusiasm and people coming into sports, and hopefully we'll get some new talents from there. And beyond getting the new talent, it's not identifying. We have many talents in Nigeria. It's about being able to harness those talents and build and develop those talents so that they can compete favorably this across is a start. the world. This is a, no, that's, a that's, I'm, I'm giving them a start. A I'm also start. taking it further by saying the next steps. It's not just to start well. We must continue well and finish well. True. You know, he's talking about favor of Philly, discovering in the next favor of Philly. When they discover the next favor of Philly, may they not have technical glitches when it's time to <laughs> register the first thing for Olympics. And very quickly with Manchester City, I'll just say from an Arsenal perspective, because of course, if people are saying, oh, points deduction, we draw their trophies. Arsenal is a bit it's a bit somehow for us because we don't want to win based on a deduction of points or withdrawal of trophies because for the last EPLs where we've come second um, with Man City, that might be the case. But this is big. I don't know if how this will turn out. But if this happens, it will be a game changer in EPL. Let's see how it goes. Well, nobody knows how the trial of the century will turn out. 115 infractions against uh, Manchester City. This case has been on for the past six years. Mm -hmm. And what are the infractions? 54 times Manchester City refused to give uh, accurate financial information. About 34 times uh, Manchester City, it is alleged, refused to give, uh, you know, uh, information about, uh, you know, financial dealings. Uh, 27 times Manchester City failed to uh, abide by UEFA regulations mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. You know, um, players and managers' uh, salaries, they claim, have not been disclosed. Now, Manchester City is saying that, you know, these allegations are fictitious. They do not exist. But Premier League is saying, no, we have to get to the bottom of this. 
we will not get any certainty on this until early 2025. But what is likely to happen? Maybe points deduction, maybe perhaps Manchester City will be expelled from the Premier League. But whatever it is, the consequences will be seismic. As for Ronaldo, uh, one billion followers. Well, there are some people who say that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is more of a celebrity than a footballer. But, well, if you look at his record as a footballer, yeah. he's both a footballer, he's also a celebrity yeah. in terms of his accomplishments on the field of play. But the more urgent story about Cristiano Ronaldo is his criticism of Eric Ten Hag in a podcast with Rio uh, Ferdinand. And uh, Eric Ten Hag has responded, he says, well, Ronaldo is far away in Saudi Arabia. He doesn't care with, about what he's saying. He's entitled to his own opinion. But, you know, Ronaldo's point is that since uh, Sir Alex Ferguson left Manchester United in 2013, that club has not been performing well. And he doesn't think that Eric Ten Hag could say it doesn't matter if they don't win Premier League or they don't win uh, Champions League. So these are the uh, two views. Some sad news we lost to Japan in the women's under-20 football match in Bukuta, Colombia. Yeah. Uh, but the Japanese, they're a very tough side. But in any case, win some, lose some. That's what the reality is in sport. <laughs>